Today's video is by far the most sexy graphic one that I've covered on this channel, so viewer discretion is advised. It involves a man, a woman, the man's genitals, a knife, and a lot of blood. That blood was also used for something very disturbing. You'll know about that part when you get there. It is a very bizarre case that comes out of no other than Japan, of course, and there's even a movie based on this true story. This is the story of Sada Abe. Sada Abe was born to Shigeyoshi Abe, her father, and Katsu Abe, her mother. She had seven siblings, and out of the eight children in total, she was the second youngest. Four of her siblings died before reaching adulthood, and out of the four remaining, she was the youngest. Her parents were tatami mat producers in the upper middle class of Tokyo's Kanda district. Shigeyoshi was a native of Chiba Prefecture, an area of Japan located directly east of Tokyo. He entered the Abe family by being adopted in order to aid in the running of the business, something he later came to inherit. Shigeyoshi, who was 52 years old when Sada was born, was characterized by authorities as an honest and respectable man who had no obvious bad habits or showed any bad behavior. However, some acquaintances claimed he was rather arrogant and had a fondness for extravagance. Katsu also had no documented criminal convictions or moral transgressions on her record. Sada happened to be born in May 1905 in Tokyo, Japan. Being born a girl at that time and place was unfortunate. In Japan, women wouldn't have the right to vote until 1946 and Japanese culture was still firmly embedded in the mindset of its feudal caste structure, one in which women had an entirely submissive position. Sada would eventually see the double standards that this created. Shintaro, her brother, was a notorious womanizer who fled with money belonging to his parents after he got married to pay for his alcoholic escapades but his parents often excused his behavior. On the contrary, Teruko, a sister of Sada, was ordered by her father to work in a brothel. Teruko was punished this way by her father because she was rumored to have been intimate with other men. Back then, this was a somewhat normal way of punishing female sexual promiscuity in Japan. However, he would eventually buy her back. At the time, Teruko's background was not viewed as a barrier to marriage for individuals of the Abe's class, and soon she married a man. Sada was her mother's youngest child that survived, and as a result, her mother adored her and let her do everything she pleased. She urged Sada to learn how to play the shamisen and sing, two skills that were at the time more strongly connected with geishas. A geisha is a female performer who is usually hired to entertain guests inside of tea houses and other social occasions in Japan. At such parties, a geisha will strike up conversations while serving drinks and food, holding tea ceremonies, dancing, singing, and playing music. In those days, geishas were viewed as glamorous celebrities, and Sada worked towards this by not attending school and going to music classes and wearing makeup that was stylish. Sada was frequently sent outside of her house all alone when family issues involving her siblings grew more serious. She quickly became friends with some teenagers who were independent just like her. When she was 14 years old, a student from Kyo University, who was a friend of hers, her during one of their outings. Although her parents first supported and defended her, she quickly became a challenging teenager to deal with. In Yokohama in 1922, Sada's parents would sell her to a geisha house in an effort to find her a place in society with some structure as she grew more reckless and unmanageable. The elder sister of Sada, Toku Abe, claimed that Sada wanted to be a geisha. Sada, however, stated that her father had turned her into a geisha to punish her for being promiscuous. The geisha culture turned out to be a very disappointing and frustrating experience for Sada. 
It takes years of training and study in arts and music starting from childhood in order to become a genuine star. She never advanced above a low status, and one of Sada's primary responsibilities was to have sex with paying clients. Although geishas aren't prostitutes and don't sell sex explicitly, it's wrong to believe that sex doesn't factor into their work or that they don't ever have sex with clients. She held this position for five years before developing syphilis, a type of sexually transmitted disease. She was legally allowed to continue performing as a geisha, provided she submitted to routine health checks. Back then, the disease was not curable, but it could be controlled. A shogi, which is a government-approved prostitute, had to do the same health checks. Shogis also made more money, which ultimately led her to switching to this job when she was 21 years old. Sada soon realized that one factor contributing to the shogi's higher income than the geishas that were lower ranked was the fact that their lifestyles were far less enjoyable. Long-standing tradition provided protection for geishas. They received a certain amount of respect from clients and some level of authority over the interaction. She had given up that power by choosing to work in the government-approved brothels, and she didn't like that. She stole from Rue clients as retaliation and was caught. She decided to leave the sex industry after receiving the repercussions and she fled. Because she had a written agreement with the brothel, she obtained employment as a waitress using a false name. Nevertheless, they found her and she was obligated to return to finish the rest of her contract. She was no longer legally required to work at the brothel after that contract expired in 1932, but she chose to carry on as an unregistered illegal sex worker known as a shisho instead. She hadn't liked working as a waitress, but at least she could choose her own customers now. Sada returned to Tokyo to attend her mother's funeral, as she died in 1932. She also reunited with her father, and they later patched up the relationship. She made the decision to remain there and work as a freelancer in the vibrant sex scene. In January 1934, her father became ill. Sada cared for him during his final days, despite him treating her so poorly for all these years. Later in 1934, when the authorities raided an illegal brothel in Tokyo, Sada happened to be working there. She and the other women employed there were detained, but a local fixer paid off the police to free them as this was a typical custom. The man who paid was named Kasahara Kanosuke, and when he first saw Sada at the station, he had feelings for her. She accepted his suggestion of quitting the brothel, then becoming his mistress, but he quickly discovered that she was much more than he was able to handle. Unless they repeated it twice, three times, or even four a night, she wasn't pleased. Kasahara really enjoyed it at first, but after a few weeks, he started to feel a little worn out. But Sada's ambition to settle down with Kasahara and ultimately experience some permanence in her life was his primary problem with her. He declined to abandon his spouse for her, despite her best efforts to convince him to. She then offered that they be open because he already had a wife, but Kasahara stated clearly that he would quit paying her if she met any other guys. Sada made the difficult decision to stop the relationship because its dynamic nature was not going to work for her. She made the decision to depart from Tokyo and travel to Nagoya because of the possibility that Kasahara could make her life problematic due to his contacts in Tokyo. Sada once more made the decision to give up prostitution after being disillusioned with how the financial aspect had ruined her relationship with Kasahara. Instead, she went back to an old occupation of hers, a restaurant maid. This is how she discovered Goro Omaya. He was a principal for a high school with political aspirations, and Sada discovered herself drawn to him more romantically than sexually, or at least for the first time. Later, she even went so far as to call their sexual relationship unsatisfactory, which presumably came as a shock to Goro. Due to his intentions of campaigning for public office and the fact that she would have been fired by the restaurant for engaging in sexual activity with a patron, they chose to keep the relationship a secret. 
The term Japanese style restaurant was frequently used as a cover for brothels, so the real restaurants had to fight to keep their reputation good. Sada was given the idea to start her own restaurant by Goro as a means of regaining some authority over her own life. Enjoying the video so far? Then make sure to leave a like and subscribe as it helps my channel grow tremendously. Now, let's get back to the video. On February 1st, 1936, Sada returned to Tokyo and became an apprentice at a restaurant called Yoshidaya. Kichizo Ishida, the 42-year-old owner of the place, had climbed his way up the corporate ladder as he was an apprentice in the beginning at an eel restaurant. In 1920, in Tokyo's Nakano district, he had established the Yoshidaya. Kichizo was a notorious womanizer who contributed nothing to the management of his restaurant, which was primarily overseen by his wife at the time Sada joined it. Kichizo started making sexual moves towards Sada once she started working at Yoshidaya. Sada was never sexually satisfied with Goro, so she moved towards Kichizo. One time in the middle of April, Sada and Kichizo had a geisha that worked at the restaurant sing a romantic song while the couple started having sex there. Sada and Kichizo met on April 23rd, 1936 inside a tea house or machiai, the modern version of a love hotel, in the Shibuya district for a prearranged encounter that was sexual in nature. The couple, who had only intended on having a brief fling, stayed in a bed for a full four days. They relocated to a different tea house in the far-off area of Futako Tamagawa that night on April 27, 1936. They proceeded to drink and engage in sexual activity here, often with a geisha singing in the background. They still carried on doing this even as maids came in to serve sake, a type of alcoholic beverage in Japan. A neighborhood called Ogu was the next stop for their protracted lovemaking session. Kichizo did not return to the restaurant until the day of May 8, 1936 during the morning. After they parted ways, Sada got upset and started excessively drinking. She said that she had experienced love for the very first time with Kichizo and the fact that he had reunited with his wife had made her envious. She then started having some very sinister thoughts about how she was going to get revenge on Kichizo and those sinister thoughts would soon become a reality more than a week later. Sada went to a play where a geisha used a big knife to assault her lover on May 9th, 1936. When Sada watched it, she made the decision to confront Kichizo with a knife during their subsequent encounter. She decided to pawn off some of her clothes two days after she saw the play and spent the funds she received on a kitchen knife and sushi. Sada and Kichizo went back to Ogu. This time, as they were making love, Sada grabbed a knife, put it next to Kichizo's penis and threatened him by saying she'd make sure he never played around with another lady. Kichizo took this as a joke and chuckled. The deliberate deprivation of oxygen to one's brain for sexual pleasure is known as erotic asphyxiation. Kichizo encouraged Sada to continue choking him after two nights of intercourse, as this made him enjoy it even more. She also had him perform it on her. On May 16th, 1936, Kichizo was having an orgasm when Sada wrapped her obi around him to stop his breathing. An obi is a type of belt that is used in Japanese attire that is usually knotted instead of being fastened with a buckle. Both of them were absolutely enjoying it. For the next two hours, they repeated this. Once Sada stopped strangling Kichizo, his face deformed and didn't go back to normal. To alleviate his pain, Kichizo took 30 calmacin tablets, which is a type of sedative. Kichizo allegedly told Sada to choke him again with the obi when he falls asleep and to not stop because it hurt a lot afterwards. Sada said she questioned whether or not he wanted her to murder him, but after some thought, she realized he had to be kidding. On the night of May 18, 1936, at about 2 a.m., Sada looped her obi twice around Kichizo's neck when he was sleeping, strangling him to death. She spent a few hours with Kichizo's body before severing his testicles and penis with a kitchen knife, wrapping them inside a magazine cover, and would carry them around with her. On Kichizo's left thigh and on a bedsheet, she had written, 
We, Sada and Kichizo Ishida, are alone, using the blood from the severed genitals. Then she engraved the Japanese character for her name, Sada, into his left arm. She put on Kichizo's underwear and left the hotel just after 8am, asking the staff to not wake Kichizo. Sada ran across her ex-lover Goro Amaya after leaving the hotel. She apologized to him several times, but Goro, who was completely unaware of Kichizo's murder, thought she was apologizing for having acquired another lover. Sada's apologies was actually for the harm his relationship with her would unavoidably do to his political career. A hunt for Sada, who had vanished, was started when Kichizo's body was found. Newspapers began covering the story on May 19, 1936. Goro's career was destroyed and Sada's life was the subject of severe public scrutiny from that point forward. Goro Amaya was the last individual who saw her before she apologized to him and fled. Later, he realized that she was expressing her remorse for having damaged his political aspirations by being with him. Over the following several days, there were many false sightings of her all over the nation, including one in a shopping district in Tokyo, which caused panic and a huge stampede. Sada herself still remained in the city, where she wrote suicide notes while residing in a hotel under a fake identity. She had planned on jumping off Mount Akoma one week after murdering Kichizo, but two days later, on May 20th, she was taken into custody. When they detained her, the cops were not even looking for Sada. They were just conducting a routine inspection when they noticed the phony name that was on the hotel registration. When they first arrived, Sada even informed them who she was, but they didn't believe her until she revealed the severed penis she still carried around. Sada had engaged in necrophilia. Necrophilia is when someone has sexual interest in or sexual contact with dead bodies. She had put Kichizo's severed penis in her mouth and inside of her, but despite her repeated attempts, this didn't work. She then made the decision to run away to Osaka while keeping Kichizo's penis with her. Her goal was to hold Kichizo's penis while leaping off a cliff that was on Mount Akoma. Sada was detained and questioned over the course of eight sessions. When asked why she killed Kichizo, the interrogator was surprised by Sada's demeanor. She became very excited and her eyes began to sparkle in an unusual way. She said that she wanted Kichizo completely to herself since she adored him so much, but because they were not married, he was free to be loved by other women until his death. She killed him so that no other woman would ever be able to touch him again. When questioned why she had cut off Kichizo's genitalia, she said she wanted the part of his body that gave her the greatest memories. Sada Abe quickly gained notoriety after her arrest as it caused a public sensation. A thorough confession made by Sada was published and went on to become a national bestseller. The judge that happened to be presiding over the trial stated that some of the information surrounding the case had sexually aroused him, but he still made sure that Sada's trial was conducted in a professional manner. At her trial, she admitted guilt and expressed her desire to be executed. However, despite the court's recognition of her impaired mental state, she was found guilty of second-degree murder and mutilating a corpse. She received a six-year sentence, though the emperor commuted one year of it in the year 1940 as this was part of a national amnesty to honor the anniversary of the beginning of Japan's empire. This was its 2600th anniversary that they were celebrating. After her release in 1941, she initially maintained a low profile. She used a fake identity and would soon become the mistress of someone she referred to solely as Y. When Y's family and friends learned who she was, the couple had no other option but to end the relationship despite knowing her real identity and keeping it a secret. In 1970, she vanished from the public eye. Midway through the 1970s, while the movie In the Realm of the Senses was already being planned, which is based on this true story, Sada was sought out by director Nagisa Shima, who eventually discovered her in a nunnery with her head shaved. Although the exact date and age isn't known, Sada died sometime after 1971 and was at least 66 years old. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and comment down below. Until then, see you next time.